Sisters, I have with me in the studio a former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Kende, is my guest on this edition of State Affairs. Femi Kende is a lawyer. He represented Ayedire Iwo Olaolua Federal Constituency of Oshun State in the House of Representatives from 1999 to 2003. He is the author of the books of Rust and Gold, Snippets of History. Samuel Laduki Akintola in the Eyes of History. These are books I recommend to you. You will enjoy reading them. Honorable Femi Kende, it's good, good to have you on State Affairs. Good morning. Thank you, Edmund. Before we go into your books, I just want you to comment on this headline. Security threat, National Assembly body scanners, orders break down. How do you feel? How will I feel? Having been a former member of the National Assembly, I believe that it is part of the, I would not say rottenness, but it is part of the issues we contend with on a daily basis in Nigeria now. It's either the management or the managers of those machines are just not doing it rightly. But uh, it is not a serious issue among other contending issues that should bother us. Why is everything breaking down? Well, Nigeria is almost 60. And uh, with that configuration, you know that we still need to redefine the concept of governance, the concept of leadership, and the concept of democracy. If we don't get our governance right, we may not get our economy right, and we may certainly not get our infrastructures right. You are a student of history. You like digging into history. As a student of history, I am bogged down every day with the huge cost, very humongous cost, of running the presidential system of government. I was a member of the National Assembly. We were 469 members doing virtually the same function. Including those in the Senate? Yes, 360 plus 109. You know that this Nigerian economy may not run this system for a very, very long time. It certainly may not endure. This is a very resourceful country that this, should afford that National Assembly. You see, we should be a talk to us in our approach. Let me give you an example. In Ghana, they have only one parliament. And it's an admixture of the presidential and the parliamentary. Perhaps we need to go back to the drawing board and see whether the issue of having part-time legislators, because on our plenary days, we see Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, whether we need to really crash down the cost of governance in this country along the broad spectrum coming from the local government up to the national level. I was a councillor in the whole local government in 1987 on a part-time basis, elected on a zero-party platform, and my salary was 500 naira. But to us, it was still a lot of money because that was not our means of livelihood. We need to redefine the concept of leadership. Politics should not be a profession, Edmund. Politics should be a vocation. You must, I have not seen somebody that will fill a form and say, profession, politics. Politics should be a vocation. But you need leaders with clear understanding of politics to govern. 
you, that is it. But you, so if you play it consistently over time, you are constantly a politician. Everybody is a political animal. But look at other climbs. You don't have to be a political warlord before you emerge as a political phenomenon that will advance the course of your nation. You have to see things on a broader perspective. But these climbs that you are looking at perhaps have different cultural diversity compared we are to a country years. like Nigeria. We are 60 years. Japan, uh, China does not practice the system you are recommending. It is a progressive country. Nigeria is a progressive country and it must move with a progressive climb. Let me say, we have had it good in this country. We had self-governance in the Western region in 1957. And we compared, in fact, Harold Wilson said that Awolowo would have been one of the best prime ministers of the Great Britain. As at that time, we had the best civil service. We had the first dualized road in Nigeria, the Queen Elizabeth Road, the best, the best uh, secretariat. We had free education. We had free aid. The first uh, housing estate in Budija in 1958. We had the first television in Africa. We had a rare diffusion as far back as 1956. You see, all these things, if we had moved on this progressive ladder, like you said, the Western region would have been an El Dorado. And the essence of self governance then was perhaps to develop a confederacy culture where this, the regions would be strong and the federa would be weak, controlling maybe three or four uh, functions. I like the way you tell stories. In your book of rust and gold, snippets of history, yeah. you, you, you tell simple but vital stories. You talked about Ibado. Yes. You talked about Ladoke, Akintola. Yes. Let's come to Ladoke, Akintola. You gave Ladoke, Akintola a book. Yes. Samuel Ladoke, Akintola, in the eyes of history. Yes. Why did you decide to unveil Akintola in the way you did in this book? Yes. Samuel Ladoke, Akintola was a grossly misunderstood personality. He was a gift to this country, just like Copa Femi Abulawa. You see, they started as very good, amiable friends from 1943 when they were members of the Nigerian Youth Movement. Samuel Ladoke Akintola was a lawyer called to the bar in 1949. He was a journalist, editor of daily service newspapers. He was the first minister of aviation, minister of communication, and the first minister of labor in this country. He was the one, as minister of health, that assisted the region, the Ibadan, to have the first teaching hospital, the UCH, that came in 1956, having been earlier relocated at the old Adioyo Hospital that was established in 1926. Ibadan, Western Region, with the first stadium, the 30,000 30, capacity stadium, patterned after Wembley Stadium, the first, eyes, the first scribe scraper, the Cocoa House, certainly was almost an El Dorado. Ibadan, the Western region was paying five shillings per daily as a daily workers, as against the three shillings that was being paid by the federal government. You wrote about Akintola in such a way that drew one's attention to the politics of hate that occurred in the Western region in the First Republic. Yes. And that politics of hate almost destroyed the Western region. It certainly destroyed. Did both men overreach themselves? Of course. You see, both men were great personalities. Awolowo was born on the 6th of March, 1909. Akintola was born on the 10th of July, 
1910. They were both uh, practicing lawyers, and they've known each other as amiable friends. Akintola calls him Hui. Awolo calls him SLA. The children were exchanging holiday visits. On the 3rd of November, 1959, when S uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo addressed the joint session of the parliament, that he was leaving the parliament for the federal government. On the 15th of December, SLA descended from the House of Representatives to move down to the Western region, House of Assembly. To the House of Assembly and contest election to be Premier. When he came to Ibadan, Edmond, in December, he had other friends in Ibadan, like the late Dr. Saka Agbaje, medical doctor. He had his in laws, the Awuma laws in Ibadan. But he lived nowhere except with his friend, Obafemi Awolo in Okebola. And he lived with Awolo in Okebola between December and March 1960, when a dinghy building was discovered to be used as a premier's lodge in Yaganku Ibadan. What later became the Court of Appeal? What later became the Court of Appeal? They were jolly good fellows. But you know, politics... Politics, politics and politics could create a lot of wedge. Let's, let, let's look at your book. Let's read, I want to read a page from, of Rust and Gold. In the cabinet, the Governor General, Sir John Macpherson, described Akintola as, the, as a master of, of ambiguities. Yes. And Chief Anahuru, but Tresdes, when he said that Kintola derived virtue in ambiguity, and Chief Obafemi Awolowo, after the London Conference of 1953, described S.L. Akintola as an able lawyer. He is a brazen and a feeble character who cannot be ruffled easily, if at all. If at all. at all. Did I wonder what tried to ruffle him? That was the real SLA, as was described by his friend before the dispasser. Did I wonder what tried to ruffle him? I wonder what could never have ruffled his friend. You see, the problem started. I wonder what was leader of the party and premier of the Western region. He was, in, he was the head of the party and the head of government. But when he moved to the federal parliament, he had to relinquish war. He lost power at the western region that was given to Akintola and moved to Lagos to be opposition leader. And that was not good And enough. that war had been used to power since 1952 when he was leader of government business between 52 and 54 and 54 and 59, when he was the premier of the Western region. And you know, power, power is an aphrodisiac. It possesses. Yes. And when you lose it, you virtually lose everything. So when I will all now go to Lagos, I realized that his level of loyalty was winning because is it power is like a honeybee. You have to move to where, you know, where it happens. He saw his colleagues who were ministers that were deferring to him as premier, now deferring to SLA. And the first major crisis started in 1961. SLA wanted to go on an economic mission to Europe and Australia. Obafemi Awolowo thought that he would be given the privilege to decide the composition of that team. The man said, I am the premier. And then he had to tinker with the list of the ministers. There were 20 regional ministers and six ministers without portfolios. Those ministers without portfolios were traditional rulers. And he saw that the Awolo influence was winning. And you know, somebody will go to Awolo tell him a story and go back to Akitola to tell him another story. 
So that wedge, that schism started, became a wide gulf in 1962 February when they went to Jaws for the eighth annual conference of the Action Group. Akintola was suspended from the party. The intention of that conference was to expel Akintola from the party and to ask him to resign as the regional minister. And you know he has his own loyalty. His loyalty was bigger because he had the control of the post. Akintola definitely tried to prevent crisis at the Just Conference. What he did was to fix the visit of Amadou Bello to the 1st of February. Amadou Bello was to be honored at the University of Ibadan by the opening of the Sultan Amadou Bello Hall. Akintola went to Jos, quickly came back to receive his colleague premier, and then moved back to Jos on the 3rd of February. He thought within those two days, tension could have, could have been tempered. But unfortunately, both parties had very fixed minds. Chief Awolowo said there were real and emerging contradictions in the party. You see, new sets of people had moved towards Awolowo. And these were young talks. These were idealists. The these is. were the ideologues, you know. As against the old federal politicians, like the Ayorosiji that was the first uh, federal secretary of the party, was replaced with S.G. Ukoku from the eastern region. The man who had def defeated his own father at the state election in the eastern region by 59 votes. You see, these were ideologies. Now telling Chief Awolowo different democratic stories. And the party whose motto was life more abundance became, his motto now became democratic socialism. The center could no longer hold. The center hold. could no longer hold. And party members were suspended in jails. Yes, party members were suspended and uh, Akitola left the party to form UPP. The, some faction of the NCNC, of the Fanica Ode, Hugh, and all sorts, also now coalesced with the UPP to form the NNDP, which was popularly called Demo. And the, some remnants of the NCNC, uh, led by the Premier, Michael Opara, also coalesced with Mama to form the Hobga, because as at this time, Awolowo was in detention and he later went to jail. You see, politics tension became high because people were using Akintola to achieve their own purpose. People were using Awolowo to achieve their own purpose. Blame both men? Blame both men. For not understanding human nature? For not understanding human nature and the dynamics of politics. We'll talk more. Femi Kende is on State Affairs. He is the author of the book, Samuel Ladoki. Akintola in the eyes of history. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. 